Welcome to Dollar Gujarati, a show about successful Gujarati entrepreneurs and professionals in America. We talk with them about their ideas and struggles on the road to success in this land of opportunity. As immigrants ourselves, we want to understand the different paths that successful immigrant Gujaratis have taken to establish themselves. This will also help us to navigate our journey in America. Hey guys, on the show today we have Deepak Shah. Deepak Shah came to the United States with only $6 in his pocket, a bag of clothes and another bag of farsan. But even while studying for his graduate degree in pharmacy, Deepak wanted to start his own business. Let's learn from Mr. Deepak on how he saved up the money to start his first pharmacy and how he grew that to a network of 23 pharmacies today. Mr. Deepak will share with us how to think about the initial investment, how does merchandising work, and the importance of customer service. Thank you, Mr. Deepak, for coming on our show. Let's start with your entry to America. When and how did you get here? I started my life in America in 1977. I was 25 years old. I graduated from pharmacy school in Indabad, Adam Sipical College. We were invited by the United States government as a pharmacist to serve here. And we got the green card right at the airport. When we came in, we didn't have no money to come here. So I borrowed $1,000 from one of my brother's friend in America to buy the ticket, one-way ticket from Ahmedabad to uh, JFK airport. I think at that time, the, the rate was like seven, seven rupees or eight rupees, something like that. We dropped, we came here. I stayed with my cousin for a couple of days. Then our friends group together. We started a new life here. Of course, in the beginning, it's a lot of struggle for seven, eight years. I mean, right now, you have a lot of uh, things available. You have restaurants, Indian restaurants, Indian business people around here. Markets are there. But in those days, we didn't have nothing. So with the bread and butter and sandwiches and on one hand coffee, we were traveling all around, making a job, looking for a job and all those things. But only one point I heard from someone, my superior, that you got to do education here, study here and get a license. So I studied for two years and got my license in 1983. Because in the beginning, I have a son who is just a pharmacist now. He was only nine months old. So struggling for keeping the family together for five years, different jobs for $3 an hour, $4 an hour. My wife was making $2 an hour. That kind of situation we had it. But I got the license in New York City. I mean, a water pharmacy license. But before that, I had an opportunity to open up a business with someone of my friendship. Okay, so you actually did end up purchasing your first pharmacy while you were still at school. How did you go about that? So we opened the first pharmacy when I was intern. So I opened up the first pharmacy with uh, about $8,000 in a pocket. I had that money because we were here. So my friend and we opened up a first pharmacy. First uh, year, we had no success. We were struggling. We do five prescription, 10 prescription. Nobody comes to us. So did you have to take any loan for this or was $8,000 actually sufficient at that time? Was it? Pharmacy, I just opened up a new pharmacy. Yeah, I didn't buy anything. I just opened up a new pharmacy. You know, I, I had my own $8,000 and my partner had uh, $8,000. So for $16,000, we, we, our own hands, and we, with my landlord, who was a Spanish landlord, help us out to do construction work and diagram and everything like that. In those days, in 1980s, there was not much to require because there was no computers, nothing. We have handwritten notes. Everything was handwritten. I didn't give up. My friend, he gave up. And he gave, says, Deepak, you take the partnership from me and I'm going to go. And he had some problem also, his personal problem. So I took over in one year. Then I look for how do I grow? You mentioned that y'all did not get any success in the first year. Were you having problems with sales? No, no. We, we were not experienced at that time. So we were beginning how to 
develop the business. But then uh, salesmen, you know, pharmacy uh, salesmen, they used to come to us giving us a pencils and pens and some, you know, things like that. So I always talk to them. I always bring the coffee for them and, you know, coffee or pizza or something. And they're happy to sit down with me and talk about it. One thing is always, you have to understand, you always keep eyes and ears open. You always learn something from everyone, even the small person or a big person. They teach you something small and big. So one day, one salesman came in. I knew, I asked him so many times, I said, you have any doctors around that looking for a place? I can find it out for around me. So he found one doctor who was like eight blocks away from me. And I got on contact with him. And you won't believe it, he became my friend. I, take, I took him to his family to dinner. I'd explain everything, how to grow, as if he's also like a tenant for some location. I said, look, and buy the property across me. I will help you out. They take care of all those small, small things. And after six months, the building, like, you know, get ready. And he came in office. And my business starts 200 prescriptions a day from like 10, 15 prescriptions to all of them. All the Spanish people start coming to my pharmacy. And I always believe in that giving something to them. So the children comes, I give them m M&M. and I give them cannabis. I give them something on top of it. I always offer all the patients my coffee, anything they ask for, I always offer them. So I had an assistant. She always helping me to help bring the business more and more. Eventually, after uh, two, three years, I moved to the other location. That's quite an intelligent move. You found out which doctor is looking for an office and then showed him a good location close to your pharmacy, made him your friend. And now because he's so close to you, naturally all the patients would come to your pharmacy. Was this a formal contract? Like, you know, I give you so much business and then I get a percentage of it? Because he bought, the, uh, he, he bought my uh, the building across me, sending, start sending patient, you know. Oh, no okay. other flavors, just a, just a relation, casual relationship. One thing, uh, trust me, it's been 40 years I'm in a business. I never ever harm anybody. No Medicaid, Medicare or insurance company came behind me. And I never do anything wrong in the business. Uh, so I wanted to ask you that when you started the first pharmacy, your investment was $16,000. And all that investment went into buying the property and uh, making the pharmacy and also for inventory. How did you go about uh, getting inventory? See, in a, in a retail pharmacy, this is how it works. The, the, the pharmacy area, we need about 500 square feet minimum. So we built the pharmacy according to uh, requirement of the board of pharmacy. And we spent 16,000 for that. My rent was only uh, $275 in those days, location-wise. Inventory, our wholesalers, they lend us. Normally, whatever inventory we needed in the beginning, most of the wholesalers, they lend us the inventory, like 200000 100000 whatever needed. And we pay them small, small amount every, every month. So they lend us the inventory. Uh, I would say probably at that time, not even to $25,000, $30,000 at the most. Because in those days, well, it's very cheap. Replenish the inventory we have to pay every month. Like, you know, after one month, whatever you bought, uh, the merchandise or, uh, from the wholesalers, we have to pay next 15th day. But inventory, what we took it as a uh, lending, we had to pay lump sum amount for 12 months or 24 months with a certain amount of interest, like 6%, 8%, whatever it is. So that's a good part of it, you know. Uh, second thing is that uh, in those days, we don't need much of the inventory because the businesses did not require much of the expensive drugs. You know, it's a, like a minimal type of a, a requirement. So that was a good part of it. And that's how we grew. The, min, the point is, I always like to have a relationship with the customers. That's one thing. I don't de- neglect anybody, whether it is a black, whether it is white, whether it's a Hispanic or anything. If anybody knows or doesn't know English, doesn't matter. I have an assistant who speaks Spanish. So small guy, big guy, doesn't matter. I always take care of them in a proper way. If they have medicine, money or no money, I'll give them. Even if they don't have no money or they don't have insurance, 
don't worry about it just take the medicine so this was how you started your first pharmacy and you you started it before you graduated also and a, mm-hmm. uh, you were already married you already had your son who was born before you started the pharmacy so how did you manage your personal finances along with because you had an you had your savings of $8000 which you put completely into your pharmacy yes and you were a student as well so how did you manage your personal finances at that time first of all listen this is my principle if you make $100 you spend only $60 and keep $40 for yourself for future do not spend everything and every dollar because here in america why the poverty is here in america also people spend all the money by the check to check if they get the check on friday they won't have money after wednesday and that's a wrong philosophy as an indian we people know how to keep the money for ourselves for, for future so yeah i mean uh, it was a struggle i would not say that did not you can think about 3 dollars an hour job <laughs> it's not <laughs> or 4 dollars an hour one day uh, it wasn't easy but we i mean you have to have faith in yourself you know you have to confidence in that so far we have 23 locations right now in uh, new york and just give my son help me out so when you wanted to expand your one store to more stores how did you go about getting investment for it and did you put up your savings again or did you find external partners for your second pharmacy and your third pharmacy as i said that i spend 60% and keeps it 40%. So year pass by uh that $8000 makes me almost over 100000 every year for last 40 years. So each location which I make it a small investment on the beginning. I have another location which is uh I started with uh, $200000 and uh, now that location makes a business of 5 million dollars. i shouldn't say in, in public that how much i make but is much money that i make from that and i'm very fortunate i bought the building the bond building for 300000 dollars now it's worth 3.5 million dollars so side by side you should look for real estate also that's another part of it save the money buy some small small group if you have good friends around you five six friends 10 friends buy the real estate in this country or in india real estate always help you lot for the for your retirement and the past life since last 8 years i'm not working as a pharmacist i have a office i manage the office and sitting home i make good money very good money i would say so so i would say that you know sitting home and doing nothing 9 to 5 job don't make any bhale tumhare door bell rakhne job hai but that you know eventually graph of the expenses so if your salary or income remains the same then you are loser am i right or wrong so proportionally every seventh year so every seventh year you have to have your income and asset double then you can do reach then you come ahead of everybody you follow what i'm saying is so tumari jo aaj 10000 per month income hoy right तो सात वर्ष पे मिनिम ट्वेंटी थाउजंड हो तुम जगत की पाचड़ो दुनिया की पाचड़ो क्योंकि दुनिया एट फास्ट एना एक्सपेन्सिस ने आगे बताए सर्किंग बेक टू लिटल बिट योर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ अ फार्मसी वॉज इट इम्पोर्टेंट देट यू हेड टू बी अ फार्मसिस्ट टू स्टार्ट अ फार्मसी इज इट नेसेसरी नॉट ने एज लॉन्ग एज यू हेव फार्मसिस्ट इन द फार्मसी You can have a farm. It's just like a CVS or a Walgreens. Who owns the CVS Walgreens? It's a corporation, but they have four thousand stores in the United States. It's run by the corporation. The same way, similar. If you have some ideas, you can create a corporation and have your hire the people, and uh, you can run the business. If I want to start a pharmacy today, I would have to pay a six-figure salary to a pharmacist. So, what's your take on starting this business for an outsider in today's environment? Well, currently, I would say you need a minimum requirement is a quarter million dollars to open up and start pharmacy. What I would say suggest maybe if you don't want to open up the pharmacy because it's a very risky figure, you you buy something 
who is an old pharmacist, let's for example, 30, 25, 30 years in the neighborhood, old American pharmacist, he's want to retire, you can take over that pharmacy. And then you put the ideas put together. You won't believe it. In Christmas, I do good dinner for the Americans. So I do sort of like 1,500 dishes. I spend $40,000 just to feed the, the American people. Because most, most of many people, American old people, they don't have no family or their children don't care about them. You have to have a merchandising business ideas, how to merchandise the store. That's the main thing. Out the, over the counter and backside pharmacy also. So if you have some sort of uh, knowledge about having relations with the physicians around you, number one, uh, you have a knowledge about merchandising the store, like a six different events comes in, um, uh, in, in the whole year. So you do decorate the, the, the store like that. You do something different than other competition. That's all basically. Flyers, calling them, do something, giving them something in return. Um, I used to do photographs, eight by 10, eight uh, by 10 free of charge. Who have become my customers for three year, three months, they get one photograph free. Then they start bringing the family and the whole family take pictures. What I do, they buy the frame from my store, which is, <laughs> which is the cost of my pictures. <laughs> so actually, you know, some of those things that it helps, you know. So uh, you can open the pharmacy. I have so many people have seen that they can learn. And, uh, but the bottom, the bottom line is, I said, if you have someone old pharmacist that buy the uh, pharmacy from there, you renovate the pharmacy, putting some money, and you can grow. There is a competition, uh, big, the big change, but I'm not afraid of relations. I mean, afraid of any change. I have a, one store between Warden and um, Reddit, and still I was doing better than them because it's relationship that's the most important. And that was actually going to be our next question that, you know, how does a, a pharmacy, which is not a big chain like a CVS or a Walgreens, how do you compete in that same market? It tends how big, how far they are each other. That's the main thing. I have some pharmacy where even next door uh, location also. But uh, <clears throat> you have to pick up uh, like a church. I used to go to church, give them the donuts and coffee and on Sunday morning, you develop the things. I had uh, one time I was, as an Indian, I went to the Italian place, neighborhood, and they hate me because I was Indian. So for six months a year, they steal the merchandise from my store. They threaten me to kill me or something like that. But I found out that they used to pay a huge money to the previous owner for some of the prescriptions. And I found out that there is an insurance in New York City who lives in New York City for more than 25 years and they pay taxes. They're eligible to get a grant insurance category. And that's what I started from one customer to another customer. So those patients who used to pay 150, 200 dollars for the medicine, they had to pay only co-payment for 5,000, 10 dollars. Once I start this thing, then they started coming to me, says, oh, Dr. Shah has some formula that we save the money. In the church, they start talking to each other. And they come and say, Dr. Shah, last Sunday, they, I heard something that you have some sort of insurance that you, you don't have to pay anything. I say, yeah, I have insurance. So 150 customers I brought new. And it was legal, nothing was. Insurance, they didn't know about that insurance. And I planned that. So that's how I built it up. Something that you know, which other people don't know, and you, you uh, in, what do you call, put together, that helps a lot. Obviously, CVS would not do that, right? If, if there's no owner in the pharmacy, Obviously, the guy who comes to work, they don't even know. But as an owner, I knew how to develop business. Suppose you, you buy the locations, but you have to be there. You have to come there. You have to check everything. You have to get the relations with the doctor's office. I always, we always give to all the doctors Christmas gift. Christmas is a gift, very important thing. So uh, you spoke a little bit about uh, how merchandising is very important inside a pharmacy. I think the same concept works for any kind of a retail store. Even if you say for Walmart, merchandising is one of their biggest uh, 
considerations so in in your pharmacies how would you divide your uh, your income from in in buckets like where is the highest margin product or which is the highest selling product okay most of the over the counter which is outside the pharmacy area you make between 30 to 35% that's normal 25 30% we put some of the products on sale which makes 15% but at the same time they come in the store and they were other things you know so average out like 25 30% in the pharmacy it depends upon the quality of the prescriptions okay our average uh, gross margin comes like 20 to 25% between 2 to 25% so you have to control your expenses now that's a summary you have to understand i was talking to you about tomorrow je rent expense about beti tonta kan vecho ho je staff and the payroll it should not be more than 6 to 7% taxes should not be more than 1 or 2% so you should be able to get net about at least 10 to 11% or at least 8 to 9% minimum right ave be mile ni pharmacy tum lo so tumne be lakh to marwa jo ye i had one more question so how important is location in deciding where you want to open the store very very important location 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 i always try to get the location which is corner location second thing you have to do the uh, what do you call uh, population around 1 or 2 miles area analysis you can go to any real estate agent they can give it to you online ke bhai kitna rich loko che kitna medium che kitna che bachche 10 ek vars pehla ek pharmacy mein buy kar raha tha 2 million ni andar jagya location barobar barobar tha aur pachhi main geographic analysis karyo to mane khabar padi ke tema 64% people live are single no family biju they don't have to buy anything a single people we just buy around and i give up the idea pharmacy business ma the more we have seen here the more we have poor people is better for us most of the location we have that they have multi story building around us and they look up as a gaadi na hoy they always walk around shop around something like that if you get you know you can create good business if you are buying a 2 million dollar pharmacy how much are you financing from the bank or do you just pay it in full Get, you have to get the finance either from the bank or from the wholesalers at least amno jo wholesalers hoy and then you approach karo so they do finance also because they have a it's a big industry so they have their own financing company but at least yeah you have to pay at least uh, 25 to 30 percent down as per sure ab tum je bebile ni baat karo chho ne bebile no store te bebile to ara pan nahi 20 percent of the value when the 400000 ke bhai the 400 plus inventory એટલે તમે એટલામાં ફાર્મસી માં તો તમે પ્રોફિટ લઈ શકો બનાવી શકો અને તમે એમેટરાઇઝ કરો 10 ઇયર્સ કે 15 ઇયર્સ ધેટ્સ ધ બેસ્ટ થિંગ સો આઈ વુડ સે પ્રોબબ્લી 100 150000 ડાઉન મેક ઇન તમે લોન લઈને પણ ચલાવો તો તોય તમને મિનિમમ 100 120000 બીજા મળે સો બેઝ અપોન લાઈક 150000 ઇન્વેસ્ટમેન્ટ તમને 120 મળે કે આ બીજે બીજી કોઈ જગ્યાએ મળે બટ રાઈટ પર્સન હેઝ ટુ રન ધ પ્લેસ what would you say is the biggest mistake one can make when running a pharmacy or any business i've done that keep the financial control in your hand checks bank na statement bank ne badhi baat so do not give to anybody else weekly je pan cash ke aa de thatu hoy eno complete report tamara hath ma ho ji monday and you have to take a check and balance of that like i could not do a lot of things and uh, my wife nena is not capable of doing any help so many times i have lost money in fact just last last year in one of the pharmacy we lost 46000 in just the lottery commission the employee stole the money and i could not even understood how it did happen but because i could not go merchandise dealing also occurs if there is no observation even if you have comp- camera and everything how many times you could have watched that things happens like that but you have to keep the employees each other from each other so like one employee tells everything about the other employee and other employees talk more about that employee that way you can connect yourself how he does and give them a, a better better some you know return or you know compensation so that oh this is nice and they don't know each other what they are doing 
Yeah, risk is there, I'm telling you. If you, have, if you don't have your own people, it's a problem. So one of the person who's handling the whole business in the location, you have to have your own person. Um, I would say pharmacy business is not a big business, it's a small business. I mean, uh, you can easily make two, three hundred thousand, uh, you know, if you, if you make a grow. And uh, after payroll and everything, I would say. But someone has to have a, you know, indigenous uh, capacity of uh, merchandising properly, buying power, how you ch buy cheaper. I mean, those who are in the pharmacy, the buying things, they have to know how to get cheaper products from some other way. So we, we check with the wholesalers, different wholesalers, and compare the prices, you know. So that's how you get money. One product you buy from, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Costco, or you buy from Walmart, or you buy from wholesalers, has a different prices. So if somebody who is, say, for example, new to America, and perhaps doesn't have any kind of a pharmacy background, they're in some other kind of industry, is it possible to you know for to partner with with you in a new pharmacy as an investment would you look at that or sure no problem but i would say somebody even look at there's no need of the education you have to have somebody to learn process of the pharmacy so i would suggest somebody from you even your brother sister anybody let them be in a pharmacy and watch everything what's going on how they do billing, what they're doing, how they buy things, and learn, then they can grow. Otherwise, you can just jump into right away sometimes. And the pharmacy industry might be developed. We plan to do 100 pharmacy in the next five years, all around. Wow, 100 pharmacies in the next five years. That looks like a really, really big challenge and an opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Deepak, for coming on our show and giving us such a detailed insight into pharmacy as a business. To our listeners, if you have any questions related to the pharmacy business, Mr. Deepak has kindly agreed to answer any of your questions. Please direct them to us at dollargujarati at the rate gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the show this week. And if you want to ask us any questions or want to see someone specific on our show, write to us at dollargujarati at gmail.com. You can also tweet to us at dollargujarati. Make sure you don't miss any episode by subscribing to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, or however it is that you get your podcast. I'm Dakshaday Shah, and you've been listening to Dollar Gujarati.